Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Asperger Studios. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be surrounded by ADHD, both clients and family? Well, my next guest, Abigail Gimble, is just that. She has family who has ADHD, and she also works with kids who have ADHD as well. She's also an author and an ADHD specialist as well. So sit back, relax, and grab your favorite beverage, and I'll see you on the other side. See you there. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Asperger Studios. Today on the show, I am joined with Abigail Gimbel, who is an ADHD specialist. Welcome to the show, Abigail. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to be with you today. So why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I got into ADHD, kind of, uh, I got dragged into the whole ADHD story. I started as a classroom teacher and uh, since I had a master's in special education, the school chose to put most of their more problematic, shall we say, students in my classroom. And I found myself way over my head, not having any idea how to educate these, these kids, which with uh, what I called special energy and still call special energy in my classroom, because I saw how intelligent they were and how resistant they were to learning, but how fabulous it was to have conversations with them. And they were fun and interesting and, mm -hmm. and every, every, they just were trying to drink in the world, but yet I couldn't get them to participate in a organized good way in the classroom. So they were my first challenge. They really pushed me to say, okay, learn how to teach us. And, uh, and that was something that, that I really uh, got into and developed some programs to, for my classroom very successfully. And at that very same time, I met my husband and the apple does not fall far from the tree. And he definitely has uh, that special energy that I saw in my students. And uh, as, as the story unfolds, I now am a mom of six amazing children, most of whom are diagnosed with ADHD. So I was thrown a new challenge of not just helping my students flourish in my classroom, but rather helping my children be able to grow up in the most healthy way possible, both as children, as friends, and as well as uh, as well as students in their own classrooms. And, and we're actually going to be uh, marrying off one of our daughters in just a month. So uh, it's been a wo wonderful long uh, journey with uh, interacting with ADHD. Now, do you take what you learn, teach your students in the classroom, and do you bring it to your personal life to help your kids? Oh, absolutely. I have, I really do have two programs, one for the classroom and I'm a, I'm a college lecturer. I, te I teach teachers. So I have the one uh, that is specifically for the classroom. And then I have a full program, which is in my two uh, books that are more for home, which obviously teachers are more than welcome to read, but uh, they do cross over because the, obviously the children are exhibiting these symptoms in both of their, of their environments. Now, were your kids professionally diagnosed or did you just see it in them because they exhibit the same things your husband has? So that's a great question. And my first few kids were diagnosed professionally. I was very not impressed with the diagnostic process. And by the time I got to kid number four, I'm like, okay, I got this. I understand. By then I was deep into the ADHD story. I was already helping others with their ADHD. So I didn't really go and, and go through the entire diagnostic process with them. Now, what kind of resources, if any, does Israel you offer for those who have ADHD? So Israel is a regular Western country, and uh, we offer all the services that any other Western country, England, America, would, would offer their students. There are small classes for kids with ADHD, if necessary. Very often, kids with ADHD do not have to be in a smaller class. Of course, we have uh, classes for kids with ASD as well, mm -hmm. and uh, usually that's much more effective for them than being in, in the regular mainstream classroom. They have uh, special education services, 
uh, for kids who, who need extra help. They will also have social groups in the class and the, in the school, and they do have support. They give the kids extra time on tests. Uh, often uh, the kids also have comorbidities like learning disabilities or dyslexia. That's something that I we have in my family as well. I have a couple of kids with dyslexia, so they do get extra help with, with reading uh, questions out loud on tests. Often they'll do the entire te uh, test orally. So yeah, we, we, we do have all the services. Unfortunately, what I, I don't see that the teachers really fully understand what ADHD is, what the challenge is, and what ASD is, and therefore they're providing the services, but not really giving the, the kids the, the full support, emotional and, and psychological support that, that they need. I, yeah, I see that throughout everyone I've talked to is schools, no matter where you are, just the teachers don't understand how to handle those who are either autistic or who have ADHD because we are different than everyone else. We're not part of the mainframe. We think differently. We act differently. Our minds kind of work differently than everyone else. So what do you go in to talk with your teacher, your kids' teachers and say, listen, this is what my kids need. This is the resources they need. How do you yeah, help yeah. the teachers understand? Listen, I say to parents all the time, you are your child's only advocate. No one is going to step in to create the dream program for your child. So I spend a lot of time meeting with teachers and guidance counselors and the special education staff in order to a, give them information about my child, where my child's holding, what, what my child's strengths and challenges are, as well as uh, give them as much support as I can. But I'm definitely a, a demanding mom. I would even say I'm properly a mama bear. And <laughs> I want my children to get the best they can. That's good for you. I mean, because not a lot of parents can, will do that for their kids because they just don't know how to step up and say, hey, listen, this is what my kid needs because they don't understand their kid, their kids themselves. Whereas most parents who who've raised who know their kids well enough know of their disability and say, I'm gonna step up. Right. Well, parents often feel bullied by the schools. The schools will tell them, or will shame them. And you know, your child's misbehaving, your child's not doing what they're supposed to. They're they're kind of insinuating that the child is broken or bad or so different that they can't be handled. So their so parents definitely feel blamed. They feel ashamed. And very often they themselves are not sure what they're supposed to be doing. So I, I think that I spend a lot of time working with parent groups to educate them and also give them the 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 strength to get out there and advocate for their children. Actually, just now when I ran in for, for our conversation, I'm just coming back from a parent training, which is one of my favorite things to do, because once the parents have knowledge and really understand what's going on for their child, they, they the kid is in, in such a better place to get the help that they need. Now, do your kids have anything else besides ADHD? So my kids uh, have, I have a couple of kids also with, uh, with learning disabilities, mainly dyslexia, which is a, a golden uh, combination there. Uh, mm. It's it definitely makes it more challenging because there's a low frustration tolerance in general with ADHD and then add on to that a very, very intelligent kid who's not managing to keep up because of the reading issue. And uh, that that's definitely kept me busy over the years. No, I've understand you've written a book called Hyper Healing. You want to yeah. tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. So Hyper Healing is, is a real labor of love. It was, it was, um, I, I never intended to write a book, but what I was seeing is that I coach parents and I, I meet with parents one-on-one -on -one, online in person. And, uh, it could, it could become expensive for my clients. And I saw that I had a very solid program. It was a program that is all tried and true. Now, I don't write anything in the book that I haven't tried on my own, but it wasn't accessible to a, a parent who couldn't afford to pay for private meetings. 
as well as people who just didn't didn't know me. We hadn't crossed paths. So I felt really that it was very, very important to make my entire program accessible to anyone with any amount of, of, of finances and at, at any distance from me. So that's really why I decided to write the book. And and the reason why, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of books on ADHD. What do I have to offer in hyperhealing that is not already out there? So my analysis was that actually ADHD as a diagnosis is a list of observable symptoms. We see the child not focusing, concentrating, breaking into adult conversations, not being disorganized, all the symptoms that we see. But my question always was, why? Why do we have those symptoms? And the simple answer is, oh, because this, the, the brain is wired differently. But actually, I was not comfortable with that answer. The more I looked into the the studies, the more I looked into what, what was being turned up, the science wasn't fully finding that with ADHD. They were not finding, they, and, and when they were finding it, it was in a very small minority of children that they were seeing that 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 the brain was was altered in some way. So I'm saying, okay, so if we're not finding that on fMRIs, on MRIs, then there's something else going on. So out of curiosity, I really tried to dig up what was happening, and it turns out that there are many different things causing ADHD symptoms. So what I do in the book is I discuss all the different, not all of them, you can't get to all of them, but the majority of main causes of ADHD symptoms. And then I provide parents with a full step-by-step, -step, really easy to follow uh, intervention plan so that they can use the book essentially as mm -hmm. if they are having a coach working with them. And this way, for the, the the small price of a book, you really can get all the support you need to identify why your specific child is struggling and uh, and get the help for that child. So what do you plan? What do you want people to take away from the book? What I'd like is to help as many parents and children as possible. I want parents to stop feeling blamed stop feeling mm -hmm. guilty and stop feeling helpless. I want parents to be empowered, to be able to see their child for who that child is, to be proud of that child, to love that child. And I want parents to be able to guide the child who's a healthy child in the right direction. That's that's my only goal. Yeah, so you, I, I get where you're coming from because a lot of people who don't understand, parents who don't understand what ADHD is, all they see is laziness. Um, yeah. no energy and they just sit there and they just constantly call it what it is but they don't see the true factor is it's not laziness it's the fact that we when you have ADHD it's finding something that drives you that motivates you that keeps your focus strong I mean when you have ADHD you need to constantly be driven you need something that motivates you that keeps you going 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 otherwise what's happening what's going to happen is you lose that focus and then you just you just get lazy and you move on to other things and when parents don't know what that is they go oh you're just lazy you don't want to continue with it and then move on right and, and I, I call that the instant gratification personality that's yeah. my first adhd cause and uh, it's exactly what you're saying. And I, I help parents understand what that is, that the child wants everything interesting and novel and here and now and fun. And that something that draws them in. A person with ADHD symptoms is a person who's more curious, who's more mm -hmm. in tune with their environment, who's noticing everything. And there's something magical and wonderful about that. It's a very important personality type. But you you definitely need to develop habits yeah. and you need to learn how to control that and learn how to push through the boredom and push through the things that 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 cause you more challenge, but in a loving and a calm way. And and if and, and through the program and hyper healing, parents can really get their child there because the child is not broken. The no. child is dealing with. A different way of seeing the world and uh and we and they should never be punished for that no i mean i mean the funny thing about adhd is it's got so many traits of autism 
It's got the hyperactivity. It's got the creativity, the hyper focus. And a lot of times that's why it gets mixed, misdiagnosed or one of the other because people don't know because they share so many common traits. Right. And the hyper focus is one of them. I mean, you probably see that in a lot of your students. You find something they have an interest in and they zoom, zoom, zoom in on it and they focus hard like and then time just flies and they forget about everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I see that all the time. I see it in my kids as well. They open up a book they love. They'll just miss a full night of sleep, gone. Or they will get super addicted to their screens. Oh, yeah. You know, you watch a movie, then another one, then another one. And, and they don't know how to stop because they're so enjoying it. They're just hyper-focused and have been sucked in by the screen. So, so we land up with some addictive behaviors as well there. So I take it your house must be a little hectic with everyone <laughs> with ADHD. There must be drawers open that are, that kids for, your kids forget to close or things left out that they forget to put away. Oh my God, the drawers make me crazy. That's I have to admit, that's one of my pet peeves. I, I just, I'd say it's so easy to close the drawer. Why would you not close the drawer? The, well, I've been through a journey with my children and it's an energetic household. It's a fun household. We do a lot of physical things just I, I, I do exercise with one of my kids every day, put on a program and we dance around the living room. <laughs> my husband's out jogging every morning. When we go out as a family, we are not going to anything passive. We go out to nature and we hike for hours. That's what we do. We go out on a raft in the water. We, we definitely, it's always a physical activity. It's always in the outdoors. So we have learned to structure our lives so that, the best could be brought out in in my children yeah. and, and myself and my husband as well. I mean, that's good because you're constantly giving them things and stuff. Your Their mind's absorbing instead of, yeah. I mean, when you're passive, act, when you're passive, you're not learning. But when you're active, your mind is constantly seeing things and learning new things. And that's why I'm so drawn to people with ADHD. It's no accident that, that my husband and I are married. I find him fascinating. There's nothing that doesn't interest him. And because of that, he knows a lot. Yeah. And, you know, he can navigate any environment with ease. It's almost like me. I mean, I have a lot of friends who would ask, ask me when I went away to school, why didn't you take the easier classes? And I'm like, why should I? Easier classes mean I'll just skate by. If I skate by, I don't learn anything. I want to take the challenging classes because it pushes me. I learn. In this way, I come out of it. Yes, I may be struggling, but I'm learning as I'm going. Well, that's remarkable. Good for you. Now, why don't you tell me a little bit about your holistic ADHD intervention program you have? Sure. So we work from... Uh, we work first, we, I talked about the different causes of ADHD symptoms. So holistic really means that I'm coming from every direction. First, I want to take an intake and figure out what's going on for that child. I want to hear all about the, the mom's pregnancy and, and the birth and, if, and, and the child's health condition um, from the very beginning up until now, if the child's been through any kind of trauma or abuse, if the, if the child has a lot of allergies, asthma, things like that. I want to I want to hear the full story. And based on that, we're going to create an intervention plan. So often I'll see that a child has runny noses all the time, has asthma, has autoimmune condition, uh, things like that, ASD symptoms. And uh, then I'm, I'm going to start my program with what I call the 30-day challenge, which is going to help them clean up their gut because there's a lot of physiological mm. things going on. And when you have a, a gut dysbiosis, all those neurotransmitters that we need in our brain are being created in our gut. And therefore we need to clean that out and strengthen the gut, strengthen the immune system. And, uh, and we I have an entire protocol for that. So that's one part of the program. If I see that the child is struggling more emotionally, I'm going to help the parents uh, work that work out the emotional side of their child's issues. Also, sometimes we're going to see that it's a screen addiction that's causing the ADHD symptoms or that the child is cramped at home and is never getting out into nature and, and is never exercising. So we're going to take this from every direction. We're going to work on habits. We're going to work on health and diet. We're going to work on the emotions. 
we're going to include uh, nature and movement in the in the program. And of course, we're always going to be checking the environment to make sure that there aren't things in the environment that are either causing worse symptoms or, or either causing symptoms, uh, period, or exacerbating symptoms that are already there. So that that is why it's a holistic approach, because we're not just mm -hmm. looking at one theory and saying, okay, now I'm going to resolve ADHD through habits. It doesn't work that way. People are dynamic. People are interesting. And there's always something different going on for each person. That's very interesting. I mean, not a lot of people will go after it the holistic way. Most people use the conventional way of treating it. You're going at a whole different way, which I think may work better for people because you're looking at it in a whole different perspective. You're almost outside the box looking in. Yeah, I don't have a box. <laughs> the <laughs> box doesn't exist. What I'm, what my goal is to search for root cause of of the symptoms. That's that's my goal, and usually we're able to to dig down. Now it takes a while sometimes to really get the program going, and if it's a person with an instant gratification personality, you really have to hold their hand and help them get the program started. But once they do start, I, I'm recently working with a client for a while, and finally we found the right combination of uh, positive feedback and a behavior chart. And this is an adult. And after many years of working together, that's what opened her up. And that's where she's, and now she's starting to thrive and reach goals mm -hmm. that she never thought she would. So why do you think? so many kids these days are getting diagnosed with ADHD. Do you think it was missed prior and parents are just seeing the results now? No, I don't buy into that one. <laughs> I also don't buy into why, you know, there's much more autism today and, 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 and spectrum uh, disorders. And I, I do not buy that. We're just noticing it better now. We're better diagnosticians. Like I said before, the diagnostic process is really lacking. It's not like the doctors have some fabulous tools that they're using today that they weren't using a while back. I've been a teacher for 25 years and uh, I know what the classrooms looked like 25 years ago. And I remember I was once a kid as well, despite being as old as I am today, I was once a kid. And I, I, I remember having one friend that that had an, had an autism spectrum disorder, and therefore, it was there are more children today struggling with autism. There are more children today struggling with ADHD symptoms. That's that's no question there. It's not brilliant diagnostic skills. Uh, what I would say is, it's probably there's no one answer for this. Is it's a combination of many different things. Uh, I would say first of all that screens are doing us no favors. And uh, the fact that kids are much more passive and not interacting with each other, they are losing social skills for sure. That wouldn't be the only cause. There's definitely a lot more chemicals in our environment than there were way back in the day. I think we might be poisoning our kids a lot with what we're putting into their bodies and what they're breathing. And, uh, and I think the fact that, uh, you know, kids are, are more on their own with mm -hmm. less parental supervision doesn't help either. But I don't have a perfect answer for that. I wish someone did so we could reverse it. But children are definitely not doing as well today as they used to. And as a matter of fact, we know that there are so many more children on psychiatric drugs today. They didn't give psychiatric drugs to children when I was a kid. And it's not because we were missing the the kids who who needed them it was because kids were not dealing with those issues as much yeah i mean i personally think nowadays more and more people are just getting misdiagnosed because they the doctors don't know what they're looking at because you have so many similarities between all these between adhd and asd they don't know one from the other and there's no way really to differentiate from it Oh, that's interesting. So you're saying that that they're overdiagnosed. It's just an overdiagnosis. It's not. I was saying that that the opposite. That that you know, it's not. It's not possible that they've gotten better at diagnosis. So I think we both agree yeah. that the diagnostic process is really uh, lacking. That's yeah, for I mean, sure. 
Um, but would I say that they're overdiagnosing? I, I would say definitely if you would compare, you know, our diagnostic tool is the, the DSM. Actually, my second book, which we haven't talked about, which is called Hyperhealing, Show Me the Science, that just came out um, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, let's um, talk about but, your book. What? Let's talk a little bit about your book. Well, what I was going to say about it is that I, 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 I discuss the diagnostic process and really our diagnostic tool is, is the, diagnostic, the, the DSM, um, the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual, which we're up to the DSM-5. And it's interesting if you compared the DSM-3 to the DSM-5, DSM-3 is where ADHD shows up or ADD uh, shows up for the first time in, in 1980. That's where we, we, you need very, you need a lot of symptoms in order to be diagnosed and you need to show those symptoms by the age of six. And it actually has to show the proper impairment in your functioning. As the years go by, we need less and less symptoms. We, the age goes up and, it, and we just have to perceive those symptoms, but it doesn't have to be causing impairment. And if we think about that, that's not a scientific process. That's a bunch of people voting and telling us um, what they think this ADHD thing is. And what, what I notice is the direction always is in the, toward diagnosing more and more children. And if we know that there's a, a financial connection between the psychiatrists who are putting together the DSM and, and pharma, then we're getting the sense that more and more children are being trapped in this net of of diagnosis, and I would agree with you that for no apparent reason, they're being they're being trapped into that net, and they become lifelong patients, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and and that does a great disservice to our to our kids. Yeah. Um, now, are any of your kids on ADHD medicine, or are you trying to treat them unconventionally? So today, none of my children are medicated. Uh, they were, three of my children were medicated at different points throughout elementary school. And uh, they, that was a, in, you know, they, they come back to me today and uh, they, they like to mention to me every once in a while how terrible that was for them. I know that children do have good experiences with medication and I'm not a purist. I'm not one of those don't touch medication types. I do believe that medication is not going to solve the problem, but sometimes the symptoms are too difficult for a kid to manage and, and they need the help. Um, yeah, so today my kids have been able to develop the skills that they need and, and they don't need the medication. Now, what have you learned from your kids? I'm pretty sure you've learned so much from your school kids and your own kids. Oh, my kids have taught me everything. My first book is dedicated to them and their faith in me. And uh, and being patient enough with me to allow me to discover who they were. I, I've learned, first and foremost, how to be curious and stop jumping to conclusions and ask questions. What's going on for you? They slowed me down. They've, they've helped me tap into the emotional side of parenting, not, not something that was well developed in me beforehand. And uh, they've helped me learn to communicate much better. So they, they've, they've been my, my finest teachers. Now, how do your kids deal with, how did they deal with their own diagnosis? So the diagnosis was not a big issue in our house. We never really talked about diagnosis so much. It was just more of a special energy. And because we're a fun family and we're out mm -hmm. playing football in our front yard at 530 in the morning before we <laughs> head out on a hike. So they kind of thought that they were cool, which they are. And uh, so there, there was kind of like a sparkle to, to, the, to the behaviors themselves. They certainly, a bunch of them struggled a lot in school and got a, a tremendous amount of negative feedback. So I would say that that, that was a, a really, really challenging process. Seeing them one after the next, graduating high school, going into university. I have a son who's a soldier. He's just finishing that right now. I have a, son, a daughter finishing university now. So I'm seeing that that it paid off. The process paid off, and they're coming into adulthood as healthy, high functioning, happy adults. Uh, but but the the elementary school process was really 
difficult and the adults around them were not sympathetic. Yeah, I see that. I mean, he, even here in the States where, where pe teachers just don't understand ADHD, ASD, and they never knew about it. I mean, growing up, we they no one knew I had ASD or even ADHD at the time. I was labeled as a learning disabled, put mm. in special ed, and it wasn't until my late twenties it came out that people started seeing signs of autism in me, and they were like, and told my mom, "Hey, I think Reed's exhibiting high functioning autism," and then that's when lights went off in my parents' head, and that would that's why I act the way I do. I and I say things sometimes that I don't mean to say. And so a lot of things nowadays, it's, it makes sense to them. Right. I think that what's happening for teachers is that they do get educated about ASD and, and, and ADHD, but they get a very shallow education. So as far as they're concerned, they know what they need to know. But they, they're kind of uh, trained to identify and medicate. That mm -hmm. that basically is what they're what they're trained to do but they're not trained to to really get into to build a program for these kids that's that's what they're not they're not trained to help the kids develop skills so but as far as they're concerned they're good they have the information they need and my students are always shocked to find out that they literally know nothing and have to start from the beginning I mean, that's a shock when you're a student or when you're somebody who doesn't know what you have. And then all of a sudden you get this, you get somebody, a doctor, or a, a therapist saying, hey, you have ADHD or you have ASD. And it's like, wow, this explains everything to me. I don't have to change who I am, but I have to start thinking about my my steps to my future. So for you, the, the diagnosis was, was very meaningful, I'm understanding. It was, because for me, it meant, it told me why I acted the way I did. It told me why I had problem, problems like not knowing when the right time to say something was. I mean, there were times where my parents would be telling me a story or be telling someone a story and they'd get something wrong. And I'd immediately in my mind say that's wrong and I'd interrupt them and then they immediately turn to me and afterwards and say, Reed, you embarrass me in front of everybody. You you need to learn to wait till the end and get me in get me in private and then tell me. Right. And the, the truth is I'm sure that that hearing that you had that diagnosis calmed your parents down. Yes. And I, I feel like parents have uh, you know this very misplaced shame when their children misbehave in public and, and then we we act out toward our children. We get angry, we yell at them, we humiliate them instead of stopping and saying, well, why did my child just act out? My child wants to behave well, wants my feedback. So what happened there? Maybe the kid was missing a skill. Maybe the kid mm -hmm. just didn't understand. So we, as parents, we have to really take a journey inward and figure out how to not have these knee-jerk responses, how to not ourselves be too too uh, spontaneous with our responses or too emotional with our responses. Yeah, I mean, but then there are those who try to use it as a crutch and say, hey, I can say whatever I want to say. And to that, I say, no, you can't. You can't use your own disability as a crutch because it's wrong. Oh, I agree with you 100%. I'm always a little bit careful about about saying that out loud, but uh, you're allowed to. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. And I, and I honestly, you know, in terms of the ADHD, I don't see that as, as a disability. I, I see that as, as a different variant of healthy. And finally, where can people find out more about you? The best place to find out more about me or to get in touch with me would be through my website, which is hyperhealing.org. And of course, you can check out my books on Amazon. The first book is in audio as well. And the second book will be in audio within the next week or so. People really enjoy listening to the audio in the car. And it's kind of like we're having a conversation as you're, as you're journeying through your day. And um, when people get, get on my website, I actually have, have two quizzes on the website. One of them is for parents of children that they suspect as ADHD, and the other is for adults themselves. 
and that and taking that quiz will really give you a tremendous amount of information. And uh, of course, you can be directly in touch with me uh, by setting up a 15 minute free consultation or sending or sending me a letter and an and email. And I'm, I'm always happy to respond. And that's it, everyone. That was Ab Abigail Gimmel. I'll see you on the next one. Thank see you. you.